You know, we speak a lot on this show about the utter disaster that was Warner Brothers HBO Max's day and date release strategy of 2021. Uh, I read an article on, uh, I think it was Reuters, that was talking about how many hundreds of millions of dollars some studios executives are projecting that they actually lost as a result of doing this. They didn't get anywhere near. Now, don't get me wrong. HBO Max has grown over 2021, but their growth trajectory didn't change from what it was in 2020. They did not get anywhere near the amount of new subscribers that they thought they were going to get. Their most successful launch that actually got them the most new subscribers you guys know, because you were in the room when we talked about this. But Rob, a little bit of trivia for you. Do you know at the top of your head what HBO Max's number one subscriber edition program that they launched this year was? Friends. You know what? You're not far off. It was their Sex in the City relaunch. Uh, okay. That got that got more <laughs> brand new subscribers than, than anything and else. That's recent. And, and, and that's recent. And that's recent. So the compressed amount of time, if they had said something like a movie like Mortal Kombat, I would have been like, oh, it's played for a long time. But, uh, and what is it? And just like that? Is yeah, that it was called Just show? Like That. Just Like That. That show's only been on for five weeks. Yeah. So they've, they've received all those subscribers in the last month and a half. Yeah, it was crazy. But now, but when talking about the movies they did, one movie did stand out as at least, I don't know how many subscribers it actually had to the channel, but most people watched it. And that number one most watched movie that HBO Max did this year when launching their stuff was Mortal Kombat. Yes. Mortal Kombat. This comes us from friends over at Joe Blow who write the following. Uh, according to Business Insider, Mortal Kombat had the best weekend of any of Warner Brothers releases on HBO Max with a total of 3.8 million viewers during its first few days. The info comes courtesy of Samba TV, which has records of all of the Warner Brothers films released on HBO Max in their first four days of release. Godzilla vs. Kong came in second with 3.6 million viewers in its first five days, and that film was followed by The Suicide Squad with 2.8 million households viewing the films during its opening weekend. The lowest number went to Judas and the Black Messiah, which pulled in a mere 653,000 households, which is not never meant to be a big blockbuster kind of film in the first place. That's an awards kind of film that they did here. I think this is a very interesting number. First of all, not surprised that Godzilla vs. Kong was right up there because that was the first one, the novelty of being like the first one that was coming out of the gate, Godzilla vs. Kong, it's going to, you know, the pandemic was still, we, I mean, that was the first movie I know the three of us, we went to go see in the theaters. It was one of the very first movies a lot of people went back to the theaters for. It did pretty well given the circumstances and it got a lot of viewers. And Mortal Kombat, well, not bad. Now, again, 3.8 million Viewers, put that in context. The last episode of Dexter, uh, the, the the new revival, which I still haven't watched. I got to watch it. But the newest episode of Dexter had eight point something million viewers. Well, so, yeah. Hey, so it, I, I just think it's interesting kind of numbers. Well, I think that the thing is movies are a one-off. Yes. And the idea, if you want to drive subscribers to your streaming service, you can't just give them like one program that they're going to be interested in. Right, it, it, I, I think that was uh, and uh, and just like that, the new Sex and the City show is a ten episode series. Yes, that's at least a two and a half because it's it's being released weekly. It's it's two to two and a half months of programming. So that would drive subscriptions. That somebody thought that well, we're going to put new movies on the platform. Well, what if you're a King Kong versus Godzilla fan, but you're not a The Little Things fan, which was one of the first day and date movies we got in January. Yeah. I don't understand how anyone thought that was a viable strategy. Like people are going to just wait to get new movies when they show up on the service. Like they always have yeah. the, the day and date. <laughs> the day and date thing was not a novelty after like, Oh, okay. Uh, I'm I'd rather see King Kong versus Godzilla in a theater anyway. And by the way, that fight scene in the water was dope. Wait, I can't even remember the scene in the water when they're fighting on the aircraft carrier. When Godzilla oh, first I shows up, Mortal Kombat oh for a no, second. yeah, oh that it. fight, yeah, I was mean, awesome. It, I love that. And fight. if you didn't that see that great. in the theater, you were missing out. Oh, you absolutely were, Kim. Are you surprised? Like, I'll be honest with you, I expected to see something like Dune, maybe uh, Justice League, maybe whatever. But I, I guess there's certain like in this case of Dune. I mean, people who were really excited about it, they went to go to the movie theaters to go see it. So I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Mortal Kombat caught me off guard. Are, are you surprised by it, or is that kind of what you thought it was going to be? I'm totally not surprised, because you know what? During the height of the pandemic, we were looking for comfort. 
We were yeah. looking for something yeah. that we knew. We were looking for an IP that we were familiar with and something we could return to after, I'm not going to call it horrible, but the 90s version was interesting. Um, <laughs> oh, come on! It's one of my favorite you know guilty what? pleasure movies for of the, all for the, time. For the, the 90s, it was Kombat. dope. For the 90s, it was dope. It's got a good dope. soundtrack. It's yeah. got a great oh, soundtrack. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can, you can do Running Man and every single song in there. Um, but I think we were looking for familiarity. And so if you think about the time when it came out, it was something exciting, it was something familiar, and it was something fun, which everyone that lived in their yoga pants at that time with spaghetti right. on their shirt, we all needed that. So I'm not surprised. Ray, you and me went to go see, we went to go see Mortal Kombat together. You, me, Ann, and Ryan went to yep, go see it. We did. Are, are you surprised to hear about it? You liked Mortal Kombat too, I, I, I liked it. I liked most of it, but uh, there's just the, the story with Cole just was... I wasn't digging. I know that was the big thing for you, right? Yeah, the yeah. Cult. But um, you know what? Like someone said in the chat, this this movie was meant for like a HBO Max, to be honest. Like uh like um even though we went to go see it in theaters, it's one of those ones that uh they started with. Wasn't it the first release they had? The first movie release? I think Congress of Godzilla was. Oh, it was? Yeah. Oh, then then yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm a little bit surprised. Anyway, guys, the question is for you. What do you think about that? That apparently, according to the to the analytics, that the most successful launch they had, I mean, new subscribers notwithstanding, was actually Mortal Kombat. Caught me a little bit off guard. What do you guys think about that? Jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts.